Okay, there's a thing come up my screen which I need to get rid of, I think. Hang on. Yeah. Are we good to go? We're good to go. I can't sneakily record you anymore, so uh, it shouts. Well, <laughs> so no does, catching you out. <laughs> it just doesn't let you do it, does it? No. No uh, fun. <laughs> I'm quite sick. Okay. Yeah, you're fine. <laughs> um, good afternoon. Today I have a lovely John with me. Hiya, John. Would you like to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, yeah, sure. My name's John, as you've just said, John Nicol. Um, I uh, write darkly psychological thrillers. Um, just had the length one come out uh, called Killing Evil at the end of July, um, which, like my all, all my books, um, draws my experiences uh, as a, a young police officer and much longer career as a, a child protection social worker and manager. I think that that's like a, a little introduction that puts things in context. Yep, and I think since we last spoke, I think that's the second book you've had out. I think you've had another one before then as well, haven't you? Um, I'm trying to think. Um, the one that's just come out was called um, Killing Evil, which may, the title sounds a bit strange, but it makes sense in terms of the story. Um, and the one before that was called The Sisters. Yeah. Um, yeah, so those two, I think, since we've spoken. Time goes fast, isn't it? I, I can't believe it. Does. It does, yeah. I was thinking I've only spoken to you very recently, but it's actually not very recently, is it? It's a, it's a few months. Yeah, I can't remember. Yeah, I think you were one of my first, so... Yeah, potentially nearly a year ago, actually, which is... It's gone incredibly quickly. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. Wow. Yeah, it must be that long if two have come out. Um, yeah, the sisters came out a good few months ago. So. Yeah. Know. Yeah, I liked that. Well, actually, I like them both. They're both amazing. Thank you. I mean, they're very different, aren't they? Yes, um, very different. The sisters is is about a group of domestic violence survivors who. Well, they're different, but there are again similar themes, really, which is just drawn on the stuff work I used to do. Um, a group of domestic violence survivors in Wales who are living in a refuge, and the systems let them down. The abusers have got away with it, and uh, they, they decide that's not good enough and to do something about it. Um, and then Killing Evil is about uh, a young girl who. Uh, was abused as a child by her own father, a guy who happened to be a priest, um, a vicar actually, rather than a priest. Um, and the book starts with her telling us her life was a young adult where she's targeting uh, sex offenders online, po posing as a child and setting a trap, um, drawing them in. So she, she tells her story, uh, how, she, how she got to that point and the things she's doing. Um, but very differently to the sisters, it's, it's written in the first, well, you've, you know, you've read it, but I guess I'm telling other people. Um, it's written in the first person, so it's, it's her telling the story in her own words, um, which I was in two minds about doing, really, because it's a female voice. But in the end, I decided I'd interviewed enough women um, who've been through those unfortunate experiences, who, who told me their story. And I think that gave me enough confidence to, to write it, really. Um, and a couple of people, uh, three actually, uh, who, who've been through what she'd been through, um, have contacted me to say that, that they read it and um, that it, 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 if anything, it was too true to life. I mean, no. yeah. Yeah. It must be, although heartbreaking, quite satisfying as well. Well, it's, I think I said, I'm trying to think, no, I, I didn't say to you before, maybe, maybe I did, but um, when you write in a book, it's much easier for someone like me who, who's you know spent 20 odd years investigating those sort of cases it, 
much easier to control events in a book than it is in real life. Um, and also you can choose your outcomes in the book, which in real life things don't always work out as you'd hope they would. Um, sometimes they do and sometimes things go well, but not every time. That's just not the way things work. Um, so I think for me, writing about the subjects I write, it, it's almost like a therapeutic element to it. Um, it it's, it's, it's a way of working through some of the things I dealt with during my, my career. Yeah, I, I remember when we spoke last time um, that you spoke about that as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I keep telling myself to, to write about something different, but I, I, the reality is I keep returning to the same themes. So um, I guess there's a reason for that. Um, try and put a different slant on the story, but try and give uh, survivors a voice. Um, and in the main, people who I've talked to who've either been in the job or it, it affects people in the job as well. Uh, they, they, they often feel things deeply is that they, when you're working with people investigating cases to trying to provide the protective service, um, you are working closely with people at, at, at their most vulnerable. Um, so yeah, you, you, you do, there is an emotional and a psychological impact. And I, and I, I think like, certainly that's why I started right then was, was to, do, to deal with that stuff. Um, and I would have thought by book 11, I, sh I should have dealt with it by now, but <laughs> as I've just returned to the same theme again, it's, I guess, I must need to do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, so we're all enjoying it. If enjoying well, is the right word, I guess. So it's fine. Yeah. You carry on. <laughs> you keep working through it. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I guess I, I've been lucky, really, and I, that I've been able to work through those issues through writing books um, that have been reasonably popular and people seem to want to read so um, so in that way I've been been fortunate really haven't I? Yeah win-win I think is how you put it. Yeah exactly exactly <laughs> um, yeah um, yeah I'm, 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 one day I must try and write something completely different but <laughs> That would be a challenge for me, I think. Yeah, it would. <laughs> you'd it'd be interested to see if you, as you were writing, you accidentally started writing again. You'd be like, oh. <laughs> it would be bound to happen. <laughs> if I started off writing a comedy, it would end up as some dark thriller. I know it would happen. <laughs> yeah, I accidentally killed the one of the characters off. Oh, yeah, whoops. <laughs> yeah, I honestly don't think I could do it. I should, I should try just as a ch sort of challenge to myself, but. I just don't think I'd be able to do it. <laughs> um, out of all the books you've written so far, is there a favourite character that you've written? Um, I think the darkest character, the, the, the one that most people said they they hated. Like you said earlier, but before we were doing the interview, we talked about reaching into the page and wanting to, to, to strangle a particular character. Um, I think that's a fantastic description, that is. I, I, I thought it was great. Um, but there's, in, in my first two books, there's a, a child psychiatrist called Dr. David Galbraith. Uh, and he, he's working as a child psychiatrist, but he's also a predatory paedophile. It, it's the most awful jo job for a man like that, but also the perfect job for him. At least that's the way he sees it, because it gives him easy access to very vulnerable children. Um, so um, he's an incredibly hateful and, and horrible character and, and an awful lot of uh, reviewers said that they hated him more than they've ever hated anyone else in any books they've read. So, um, which is exactly what I wanted them to do. So um, I was quite pleased about that really, because it's, he, should, he should be hated and detested because he's, he's a vital character. Um, but I think my favourite character is just written, which is the, the, uh, called Killing Evil, which is a 
the main character is a, a lady called, or a young woman called Alice Granger. Although she says that's not her real name because she doesn't want to give away her real name. Um, but because the whole book's in her voice, I, I got, it sound, might sound a bit crazy, but you got quite close to your character sometimes. You have to make them real in your head for them to come out credible on the page. Um, I think she's been my favorite character, although, although as the book continues, she's in a sort of steady decline. And it, and it does get to the point where she gets a lot harder to like as, it, as, as the book goes on, really. Yeah, well, I don't know. I still didn't want her to get caught, even as it came to the end. So, quite a few I people she, have said yeah. that. Um, quite a few people have said that, um, which has surprised me to an extent because of how far she took things in the story. Um, and one pretty amazing thing that happened was uh, it's, it's amazing the people you can talk to on Facebook, isn't it? Sometimes it's <laughs> complete shock. Um, I had a message for, from someone who, um, they're a, an author, a successful American author, but they're also a, a consultant to the FBI um, and work for the other major crime intelligence agency in America. Um, and, and what they, this person, particular person specializes in is um, and terrorist offences. So they live in this stuff day in, day out. Um, and they, they'd read the book, believe it or not, and um, said really incredibly positive things about it, which, which meant a lot because of, of what they did. Um, and she um, actually reviewed the book on a website it's a website only for American um, law enforcement professionals. So, you know, people like police, FBI, CIA. Um, and and, and I, I looked at the website and um, I would say 75% of the articles are about guns. <laughs> American law enforcement. Um, you know, different types of guns, uh, what they're useful for, you know, how easy they are to conceal, all this sort of stuff. Um, <laughs> but yeah, she, she, she was kind enough to review the book, review Killing Evil on, on there and, and said some very positive things which, which were appreciated, really. That's amazing. Yeah, that's very cool. Yeah, and uh, kind of just bizarre, isn't it? Uh, wow. <laughs> uh, yeah, you never expect that to happen when you're, it's just, just crazy. But yeah, it, was, it was good. Um, what's been the most fun scene you've written in any of your books? I imagine there's plenty of difficult ones, but has there been any fun ones? Yeah, um, in in the one of the characters in in the books, um, in in the early books, was a detective inspector Gareth Gravel, um, who was a sort of really old school copper uh, who drinks sort of stereotypical in a way, but from my my time working with, with the police, um, the, particularly back in the 80s when I started, there really were characters like that. Um, and, and this Gareth Growl is, is based quite heavily on a guy I knew. Um, so, you know, he's overweight, he drinks too much, he, he, does, he, he doesn't shave, he always looks a bit of a scruff, that sort of thing. Um, and in, in one of the books, it's, it's called um, Before I Met Him, uh, I, I sent him to Barbados to visit his son who's working there as a golf pro. He's, he's so out of his comfort zone and, you know, um, some of the stuff he gets up to uh, when, when he's on holiday, I hope written in a humorous way. Um, you know, describing the way he, he looked, he's sort of guy who'd wear uh, open toe sandals with, with, with socks and, and shorts and you know big baggy shorts, that sort of character. Um, so yeah, a few people said that made them laugh. Um, and also him and his sidekick, there's a lot of dark humour in the books where, where they're joking about stuff that 
most people probably wouldn't joke about, but it, it's like a survival tactic. Um, it, it, certainly my experience of work in, working with the police, it, it, was, it was common. And I sometimes used to think if someone overheard what you were saying, they'd be horrified. Um, but it's just a coping mechanism. Um, and I think people in child protection do the same thing. And I, I know from talking to my daughter who's worked, worked in London as a paramedic, she was saying they do as well. It's just a way of dealing with the stress, really. Um, yes, yeah, quite common, isn't it? Um, forensics as well, of dark humour and... Sure. Yeah. yeah, they have to. It's a way of dealing with the horror, isn't it? You know, it's... Yeah. It exercises it to an extent. Yeah, I, I, just, I can see why it would be seen as, you know, disrespectful and stuff, but it, it isn't really... It's not, just... it's not how you really feel, is it? No. <laughs> It doesn't affect the real opinions, it's just, no. So, so in the, the Grav books, there's, there's a lot of dark humour and a lot of banter between the two officers. Um, they're always taking the, the mick out of each other. And so uh, in those books, I've tried to balance the, the horror with humour. Um, whereas in, in the more recent one, the, the one that was published at the end of July, Killing Evil, that I don't think there's anything funny in that one at all, actually. No, I don't think so. No. No, it, it didn't. There was no opportunity to introduce anything humorous, really. No. No. <laughs> it, it still works. It's still awesome. That's kind of... Um, I, I, I think I'm... I think it's the book I've been most pleased with myself. So I'm usually my worst worst critic, really. I think we all all authors see nothing but flaws. When, when you have a book published, you end up having to read it so many times with the edit in. Um, you end up reading it perhaps seven, eight times over a short period. And by the end of that period, you, you just all you're seeing is what you see as faults. Um, you, you start off, you know, reading it the first time thinking, oh, this is actually quite good, this isn't bad. And then by the eighth time thinking, oh, God, this is crap. <laughs> <laughs> but I think everyone feels the same. It's, it's just you get, you lose the story, the story's gone, and all you're seeing is the structure of sentences or the wording of a sentence. You think, have I, or the order, you know, the, the, should I change the order of that paragraph? And it's all you're seeing is that sort of stuff. And that's the time to stop reading it, really. <laughs> when it, first comes, it you know, goes to all the art reviewers and things, you think you've really got no idea how people are going to react. Um, and it, it's always a, a very gratifying and a huge relief then if people like it. Uh, you said before uh, we started recording that your wife was your first reader, so you must have an idea of her reaction of how it's going to be. Taken. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Probably my strongest critic, I suspect. So. <laughs> oh dear. So, so the arc readers really are the first gauge of how <laughs> how uh, it's. I'm only kidding. She she, she, she is never would never say anything, you know, unpleasant or anything. But if if she thinks something isn't working or something isn't right, I need she'll tell me. Which is what you need, isn't it? You, you know, you don't want someone telling you, oh, it's wonderful if it's not. So you're just an honest opinion. I think that's what you're after. Yeah. Yeah. And it always makes me laugh if I, on, I, I've got a group on Facebook, uh, on Facebook, like, are you in there, aren't you? Like the art group, art group rather. Um, and there was a, cup, a cover that, that um, the publisher had come up with. Um, and I remember putting it in the group and uh, saying what do people think and again you want an honest um and, and one of the group uh, replied something along the lines of, of oh my god it's absolutely crap <laughs> <laughs> i really laughed my head off when i read that <laughs> <laughs> she didn't say why she hated it um and they used a different cover in the end so it was fine but yeah <laughs> So if, if that's what you want, really, is someone to be honest with you. And if, if it's brilliant, say that. But if it's not, then please tell me that as well. Yeah. yeah. That 
that's not necessarily so bluntly, but no, nah, it got the <laughs> it got the message across. I just <laughs> well, there's no ambiguity there, is there really? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I'm wondering if I know who that is as well. I think you probably do. Um, and reviews, I think I think you get less sensitive as time goes on, really, with reviews. I think we were chatting earlier when we had, um, lots of people love the books um, and you know some people are going to hate them and, and that's that's I've got to the point where that's fine because people are entitled to an opinion and if, if they don't like it then that's that's okay isn't it um, but I'm, I'm fortunate in, in that most people um, most people seem to like them and, and quite a lot of people have, have read all of them now um, and, and quite a lot of those reviewers like the most recent one the best, which which is nice. Um, I have got one lady who leaves me a verified purchase one star review for every single book. Uh, every, every, literally everyone. Um, and uh, she hasn't for this one yet, but I thought give her time. <laughs> I'm sure she'll get round to it. Um, but I, I, I did look out of interest. It, it's got to the point it makes me laugh now because I'm just waiting for it. I just, <laughs> oh, there she is. <laughs> what, what cracks me up? She actually buys in to do it, you know? So she's, not, <laughs> she's now bought 10 of them and, uh, you know, I've done it to all of them. So I, um, but yeah, but I, I did look um, at some of the other reviews and she, she does leave one star reviews for almost everyone, so that made me think, okay. What a weird, weird person. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, if she's if she's watching this, I'll say hi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, apparently you need a couple of lower reviews, otherwise it just looks dodgy anyway. So perhaps you know. I'd... <laughs> I, I did see one book with 100% five star reviews, and I thought, "Got oh, really?" <laughs> yeah. Uh, even the best book in the world, someone's going to not like it, and they. Yeah, I've been really stingy with my five stars lately. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, so. I, I, I can. <laughs> if, if I really don't like a book, I just won't leave a review at all. Oh uh, yeah. There's no no point being nasty for no reason, is there? You know, someone still spent six months or whatever writing it, so. Exactly. So yeah, I I I would never leave a bad review. I, I I would always leave an honest review, but I'd never leave a bad one. So I'd I'd rather not write one than read a bad than leave a bad one. Yeah. It's, it's just unnecessary. Yeah. Luckily, all the authors I read are amazing, so it's never an issue. You're all four or five stars, not even three stars. So yeah. either you're all awesome or I'm just really generous with my star reviews. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it could be that, couldn't it? <laughs> now you're all awesome. Oh, that's kind. I, I think when you first start, and it's like you're going to have your first one out soon, aren't you? Um, it, does feel <laughs> it, it does feel incredibly personal at, at first. Um, and it's like, I, th I think I've probably said to you before, it's a bit like someone uh, commenting on your kids. You know, it's really just, it, it really hits home when, when you start. Um, and equally, when you read a lovely review, uh, perhaps you, you take that on board too much as well. Uh, but as you go further down the line and you, you've written a few books, while the good reviews are always hugely appreciated, which they are, um, you don't, or at least I don't, get upset by the people who don't like the books. Um, because whatever book you look at, or whatever film or anything else, there's always people who like something different. Or, and I, I think as well, because of the subject matter I write, which is very emotive stuff, you know, it, it, it's domestic violence, uh, child protection, those sort of things. Um, there's always going to be a group of people who are automatically, it's, it's not for them. Um, and I completely understand that as well. So that, 
So I, I don't, as crazy as it sounds, I, I love getting great reviews, but I, I don't get upset about bad reviews because it goes with the territory, really. Yeah. That's it. I mean, if we all like the same stuff, then, well, what would be the point, really? Anyway, there'd be no point in writing, would there? Exactly. I, I, I read a review recently. My, my favourite ever film that I've seen is The English Patient. You know, the, it was a book of praise winning book, and then it yeah. made it. I thought the film was even better than the book, to be honest. Um, but I, I, I read something on Facebook the other day with someone saying they thought that was the worst film they'd ever seen. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I thought then, well, okay, that's how different people's opinions are. You yes. Know, I, I loved I, it, I hated it. And yeah, yeah, we were talking before, weren't we, um, about Shawshank Redemption which is regularly voted, you know, the best film ever. But I imagine there's plenty of people out there that can't stand it. Yeah. Which I, is beyond my comprehension. But yes, yeah, fair yeah. enough, you know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and as I say, it'd be, it'd be a strange world if we all like the same thing, wouldn't it? So. Yeah. Yeah. Still think they're wrong though. Shawshank is brilliant. <laughs> Great. And yeah, it, it didn't do that well, did it, first time around? <laughs> How did that happen? It's it's strange, isn't it? Yeah, it is strange. Yeah, it's funny how sometimes things pick up years and years later, and yeah. and then it's a cult. Then it's, it's weird. Yeah, I don't know. And then there's some films which are absolute, genuinely absolute crap, and they they're a massive hit, aren't they? You know, it's, and then some which are, are tremendous. Um, I I got it recently myself and Diane. We, my wife, we, we've been watching uh, films, oh, what's it called? Um, it's Robert Redford's Film Festival. No, I can't think of the name of it. <laughs> oh, how annoying. Um, what was the very famous film he was in with Paul Newman when they were cowboys? Uh... Oh, <laughs> Oh, I, I, I'm not. I'm not gonna. It's, I'm not gonna remember. I'm gonna remember as soon as we finish the interview. <laughs> Robert Redford has his own film festival, and we've been going through films that have, have won, um, won the best film in the festival, sort of thing, over years, and they're they're all absolutely brilliant. Um, and they don't have big stars in in the main. They're all relatively unknown people. But, but, the, rap, the quality of films is so good. I'd, I'd highly recommend it if I could think of a name of it. <laughs> <laughs> You'll message me later on tonight and I'll just get this random name and be like, the hell's that? Oh, all right. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sure if anyone wants to check it out, if they look up Robert Redwood's Film Festival, they'll find it straight away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's um, There was one... Um, which was called Brittany Runs a Marathon, which is, is if anybody hasn't seen it, well, I don't think it has got much publicity, but that was great. I love that. I love finding hidden gems, which is why I love reading indie authors because I'm reading some amazing books and no one's have heard of them, although I wish they had, but <laughs> it, is, it is nice to find, you know, to appreciate something that's amazing that not many people know about. Yeah. <laughs> I was looking at, um, I think it's on my Facebook page actually, an, an Australian, young Australian woman who's just got uh, long listed for the Booker Prize. And her book was rejected and rejected and rejected. She just could not get a publisher. And in the end, a very small British publisher published it. Um, a publisher I'd never heard of actually. Um, and now she's, that same book is long listed for the Booker Prize. So um, yeah, it's amazing what can happen, isn't it? Yeah, it it really is. Yeah, it's. Um, I think Hobbit Books have got one of their authors is up for um a prize at Bloody Scotland as well, which you know they've only been around just over a year, I think. So that's pretty awesome. That's amazing. Yeah, uh, Mark Whiteman, I think. Okay, I'll have to check him out. Yeah, I've got it on my Kindle. I haven't got around to reading it yet, but. <laughs> I had a, a pleasant surprise um, a, about three weeks ago, actually. I, I had an email from, from an Indian guy, um, completely out of the blue. And um, 
my latest, not my latest one, was it my latest one? Yes, it is. My, my latest one uh, has had been nominated for a, um, a book award in India, which was a complete gobsmack. How did that happen sort of thing? Um, yeah, so that, that was really, really quite nice to hear. Um, I, lo I looked at um, the, the nominations page and um, I think almost everyone else appeared to, to be an Indian writer. That, that confused me even more then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how on earth that happened? But, yeah. Oh. Wait, do, you, do you know if they've announced the winners yet? Do you know if you've won anything or is it just... No, I've only been nominated. I, 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 don't, I don't think they've announced any winners yet, but I'm not expecting to win anything, but... But it's nice to be nominated. <laughs> yeah, I saw that and I thought it was weird. <laughs> I thought it was very strange. I, I, I was really pleased, and it, obviously, it's always nice when someone likes some, some one of your books, isn't it? But um, I don't know how it happened, really. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have so many books in India. I can't imagine I do anyway. Or perhaps you're missing a complete huge market and they love your books i think there is a huge market someone told me it is a huge market um but whether or not they they'd like um i don't i just don't know i'm, I'm just gonna talk <laughs> if i carry on so i just don't know what i'm talking about so <laughs> yeah i mean I, I think britain and america is the obvious big markets aren't they? but yeah. i also read that germany is quite a big market for english language thrillers um, I think it's, it's, I read somewhere, it's the third biggest market after America and Britain. Oh, wow. So, I don't know. Yeah. I haven't got any books in German, so. No. Well, perhaps you need to. Well, That's where your number one is waiting to, <laughs> to come out. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, the way it works is that, a German publisher would have to come along and buy the rights from from uh, the publisher. So you can't make it happen, really. It's just got to happen. Yeah. Yeah, it's quite, I didn't know that. If they're the third biggest, then I haven't heard many um, that have their books translated to German. So, yeah, it's interesting. I know a lot of Czech, but, yeah. yeah I've, 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 I'm not sure if we talked about it before or after we started into it. Was it before or after? Before, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've got four coming out in the Czech language and one coming out in Hungarian. Um, it's it's all been uh, slowed down by the whole COVID thing because there's a bigger focus on paperbacks and ha handbacks in those countries than there is on ebooks and and like in Britain. Um, so they want the bookshops all to be up and running and open before they publish them. Um, it's the four grav books. Um, are going to be in. Um, no, it's not. I'm, 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 it's so long ago it all got signed. I'm, I'm forgetting myself. It's the two Galbraith books. What is the coldest color? And um, when evil calls your name. Um, and two other books of the grav series. Oh, it's six. It's not four, it's six. The, the, four, the, the four Grav books and the two Galbraith books have been done in the Czech language. Uh, the first Grav book, which is called Portraits of the Dead, has been done in Hungarian. Um, so just waiting for the for everything to be back open and, and hopefully they'll get them up for sale. Yeah, that would be awesome. Uh, I'm, I'm, hoping to use it as an excuse to go to um, the book fair in Czechoslovakia. There's, there's a big one in Prague. Um, so, and it, it looks brilliant. So um, I had booked to go last year because the books were supposed to be out last year, but everything got canceled. We had the hotel book never. Um, so hopefully the next one now. Yeah, fingers crossed. Yeah, things seem to be improving, don't they? They do, yeah. Slowly, slowly, we're getting there. <laughs> I think we are, aren't we? This, yeah. Yeah, thank God. 
Thank God, indeed. It's been unbelievable, isn't it, really? Yeah, hopefully once in a lifetime. Yeah, let's hope so. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, most people have been vaccinated now, haven't they? And we're all yeah. going to have, apparently, we're all going to have to have another one in a few months' time. So. Yeah, I don't care. They can keep injecting me if they want, as long as I don't ever catch that horrible illness. And I feel the same way. If life can get back to normal, then it's a small price to pay, isn't it, really? Yeah, we have the flu jab every year. What difference is it, really? Yeah. Yeah. Bring it on. Keep yeah. keep injecting me. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, just just anything which gets life back, really. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when you're going through your books, what's your most overused word or phrase that you have to keep editing out? Um, I think I'm better now than I used to be. Um, I used to use the word and too often. Um, there was an awful lot of ands when I started. So I, I cut, I cut, I don't use them nearly as much now. Um, I think I said, but that's it really. Um, sometimes you use sort of metaphors, um, um, you know, when, when you're writing, you can use a metaphor to, to describe something happening, like, um, like someone seeing stars or something after they've been punched. Uh, and I, and I, sometimes I've got to watch out for using the same metaphor more than once. Because mm -hmm. well, that can happen. But the editors are pretty good at that. You know, they, they'll say, oh, you've already said that in chapter 10 or something. So you can cut it out. Um, and the other thing I've got, I've got to watch out for is just little inconsistencies. Like it, with the book I've just written, there was a chapter where um, it was something to do with a car. Um, Oh yes, where someone was surprised that the car was a manual shift, not uh, automatic. Um, and the editor pointed out to me that she'd actually driven already driven the car in the previous chapter. <laughs> Sometimes you know you need someone to sort of point those sort of things out to you, which is uh, always handy. Yeah, definitely, <laughs> because us readers we do spot these things, don't we? Okay. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Um, one thing I, with, with the, the first book, so I, I, I self published the first one before it, it, in the end it got published, but um, just silly little things like um, I can remember saying that a magistrate in the book was in their 70s, and given my professional background, I should have known they retire at 70. So just little things like that, and, p and people pick them up. Um, and sometimes they'll write a review and that's the only thing they'll talk about in the review is that one yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah, so, so it, it happens to us all, I think. Yeah, I think, I guess, cause we just read so many that we just pick stuff up. We don't mean to, we just we can't help it. <laughs> I'm always really grateful when, when I, like with the one I've just done, Killing Evil, um, when I send it out to ARC readers, I think you, you, you're one of them actually, you, you messaged me, didn't you? With a couple of I did. Type. Yeah, well that, that's incredibly helpful because that book, I'd read it probably five or six times. My wife had read it, um, the editor had read it, and two proofreaders had read it. And things were missed, you know? Um, and you contacted me and I think three or four of the uh, ARC readers also did, um, all pointing out things which everyone had missed. So it's invaluable really, because that's that's my sort of always, my pet hate is, is a book be published with typos. It, it always hurts. <laughs> yeah. Have I told you the story about what happened with my first book? About um, the typo thing. I think so, because I think I asked you about what your most embarrassing, what the most embarrassing thing was, and I think that was it, so. That was, that was definitely it, yeah. Yeah. I, I yeah. Won't tell the story again, because it, it is <laughs> awful, but. Um, oh God. 
but yeah so i think because of that i've got absolute dread of any type of um but although I, I i did see a funny one um i wouldn't like to be the author who wrote the book but and i've told the story in, uh, to a couple of people just because it's stuck in my mind because it's quite it was a funny typo but an awful typo if, if you're the author um it it, it was uh have i told you this story? If, I'm, if i'm repeating myself tell me to shut up and I'll, I'll, it doesn't I'll, ring a bell so i don't think so <laughs> well, it, it it was a, a scene where there'd been a a man and a woman um spending the night together um early in their relationship um, and th the line was something like, um, when he, when he left the next morning, I could still smell his cologne on the bed sheets. And the typo was the word cologne had come out as colon. <laughs> That's all for her. So I, 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 I laughed when I read it. <laughs> Right. Oh my God! I'm glad that's not my book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a. Oh man. Yeah, it's a howler. Oh, yeah, I, I felt for the author. I, I did try and find them on Facebook to tell them, but I I couldn't find them. <laughs> They've probably gone into hiding. <laughs> uh, quite a well-known author, actually. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's one of those that spell check and stuff won't pick up either, is it? Because it's you know it's a still a word and. Word, yeah. And you you see what you want to see, and yeah. And you yeah, we all do, don't we? Because you you, think you you read what you think you wrote. That's why writers can't proofread their own books. Very, I use I do use when I'm I always use Grammarly, because that picks up on quite a lot of stuff. And I think the better it is when it goes to the proofreaders and art readers, the less there is for them to find, the better. Because I always think if there's less to find, it is more likely that everything will be spotted. Um, so, yeah, it, it it seems to work. So, but I, I'm I'm not not bad at, at spotting mistakes. Although I always it's loads, and then Grammarly picks up probably on about two thirds of stuff. Um, then the proofreaders pick up on ninety five percent of what's left, but never everything. Um, and then arc readers spot little things and you think, oh my God, how did I miss that? I've read that sentence 10 times, you know? <laughs> yeah. My um, my proudest one, I think, is <clears throat> I read, I can't remember who it was by, but um, I read a book and the registration of the Kara changed from one chapter to, the, to a couple of chapters later. And the author said that book's been out seven years and no one had ever noticed. Seven years. Yeah. That's amazing, isn't it? That's, yeah. I mean, I, I, I've had some howlers mm. where people have told me, art readers, one particular one where um, I'd given a character a different name in a different chapter, which would have ruined the book, wouldn't it? You know, so, so you think, oh, thank God they spotted it. I, 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 I find that the more more arc readers you can send it to, the better, really. No, yeah, because yeah, they spot different things, don't they? I noticed that when we were, because um, when I was reading it, I was a bit later than some of the others, so I was worried about um, not, you know, um, trying to send you the same uh, typos that others had got. But I don't think I did because <laughs> pick up on different. Yeah, and it's so strange, isn't it? <laughs> But it's 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 so important, and yeah, it's 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 always a huge relief when people spot them. Really, um, because when you're self-publishing, when I when I started self-publishing, um, I didn't have an art group or anything like that. So I, my first couple of books, there were a few typos which had to be changed. Um, but I only found out about them after the book was published. You know, someone would message you saying, um, "Oh, I spotted a mistake in chapter ten or something." And you think, oh, I swear, I, I, I didn't, I nearly swore that, but I won. Um, <laughs> I mean, if you publish on Amazon, you then upload a file, but then it doesn't go live for about a week. Um, at least it didn't in those days. So, you know, you know the mistake is there and other people are buying the book. And it, 
it's it's frustrating. It's so uh, I'm I'm grateful these days that I've got so many people who can check them for me. Yeah. Yeah, in, in my book, um, my character changed her name, especially in the last few chapters, about three times. She had about three different names, and I was what the hell was I thinking? <laughs> the poor, <laughs> the poor girl, bless her. She had a proper identity crisis at the end. <laughs> Yeah, so it's sometimes, I, I think every writer I've spoken to, it happens to. Um, it, it's, it's a lot a lot to write, isn't it, at the end of the day? You know, a book is a, is a lot to write in. So the idea that you can do it without any errors is, it's not going to happen, really. No. no. Yeah, and I think I'm quite good at spotting them, but yeah, in my own, I, I missed loads. Um, other people spotted, so yeah, it is true. You just can't see them at all. No, spot them in other people much better than in my own. Um, and I, I always do let people know if if um, if it's possible. You know, it isn't always possible, um, particularly if they're a really big name author. Then they're not. Always, you can't. They're not always contactable, are they? No. Um, but I'm sure they'd want to know. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, do you have any fears or phobias and would you write about them or have you written about them? Um, not really fears or phobias. I, I've been through a lot of really heavy stuff with the work I used to do, you know, some quite horrendous cases, really. Um, so I, I guess I am writing about some of the worst experiences in my life, although it's fictionalized. It, it draws on cases I investigated and people I know, good or bad. Um, so yeah, I guess I do do that all the time, really. Yeah. The personal sort of phobias and things. Um, No, not really. I mean, people I know make little appearances, like my wife appears in one of the books, just walking the dog and talking to a police officer on the on the beach sort of thing. And I, I do do little things like that. Um, but I wouldn't do it unless I knew the person and asked them, is that okay? Um, and you name characters after people as well. Um, like the main one of my main detectives is called Laura Kesey. And her, her daughter's name is Laura, and um, Kesey is from the, the guy who wrote, Ken Kesey, who wrote One Flew at the Poker's Nest. <laughs> yeah, I got, um, I was a named character in a book recently. Okay, which one? Um, it's called The Grifter. And um, I was a, a disgraced sex mad politician. <laughs> Is that is that true? true, true? Is that real life? Or? If only. Apparently, I paid to have three men at once. Oh god! If only. <laughs> no politician. Yeah. So, could it be further from the truth? Sadly, <laughs> but I did laugh when I read it. <laughs> Who wrote that one then? Uh, Sean Campbell and Ali Gunn, actually, it was a, um, a joint um, book and it, it's actually brilliant. Um, the premise is um, that there's a homeless guy that's lost everything because he invested his money with a dodgy stockbroker. And then the other side of the story is told from his point of view. And he's basically running um, what I think they call a Ponzi scheme. Okay. So he's borrowing money constantly to try and keep on top of everyone and um, so he's the one that lost all the homeless guys money so the homeless guys trying to get revenge and the rich guys trying to keep on top without you know yeah yeah and yeah it's it is really 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 good it sounds interesting yeah yeah um it's uh, it's like alternating chapters as well and um yeah it's... I, I, I like books with alternate, alternating chapters it's interesting because you get a different perspective on different people don't you yeah. yeah. But funny enough, that's what I, I got in mind to do with, with the next one is do exactly that, do like uh, the police officer and the killer 
or to the chapters, but in the first person again, so they're talking to the reader. Mm -hmm. um, it's a bit ambitious, I think, but the idea of it, I mean, but I, I think I'd give it a go. Well, you never know unless you try. Exactly. exactly. And it worked, first person worked brilliantly for Killing Evil, so. I found it easier, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, I found I could write a lot faster. Um, it just flowed easier, and, and and because you're writing in the first person, some of the rules that editors tend to give you, like show, don't tell, and those things, you know, the sort of standard things editors say. Um, you can't really say that about a book in the first person if it's someone's diary, because someone can write what the hell they want in their diary, can't they? Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, I found it easier. So I think I, I will do it again. Yeah, I quite um, liked the, like, um, I'm not going to tell you that yet and stuff as, um, like, her talking to us, it was, it was uh, interesting. I, I quite liked, like, knowing that, um, you know, something more was coming and it yeah. was, yeah, it was, it was, um, it was cool. I, tr I tried <laughs> to as a suspense thing, really, to say there's more to tell or this, you know, um, you'll learn about that in the next chapter, that sort of thing. Just and, and so it felt a bit more personal to the person reading it as if the person was talking to them. Yeah, that's exactly what it felt like. Good, that, that was the intention. So, uh, it, in the work I used to do, I interviewed an awful lot of people who'd been, um, who were survivors or, or who'd been victims. Um, so I hope it, it, it had a, a ring of truth to it. Um, one person did say, a guy actually, it surprised me, it, it was a man, um, that they stopped reading it because it was too close to home and it, it read more like a, comf a confession one, um, than a story, which I, I was, took as a compliment really, because it is her, it is her confession in a way, isn't it? That's, what, that's exactly what yeah. it is. <clears throat> so he, he said he, he couldn't read it because it was, it, it it was too intense, um, but the vast majority of people have reacted very positively, which, and, and there's, there's been some major interest, which is always nice. This is it's obviously nice for people to, to hear about the books. Um, and the, there's, uh, being outside Wales, you, you probably, there's a paper in Wales called the Western Mail. It's, it's like the, the main Welsh newspaper. Um, they, they did a, like a, a Featured article on it in, in their magazine a couple of Saturdays ago, which really pleased me because um, the journalist who wrote it um, liked the book a lot, which is just, they don't always, obviously, you can't tell a journalist to like your book. It's either they do or they don't. So <laughs> I, I was lucky in that she, she liked it a lot, and that was really nice, nice to see. Yeah, I've seen them. Um, I think you posted it, didn't you? So I saw. Um... Which is, yeah, and I, I try and share it where I can so everyone can see. Yeah, and I, I made a bit of photo for me. Um, it's the photo I used, in, in, when I, a new paper did a previous article and I, they asked me for a photograph. Um, and I genuinely didn't have any sort of suitable photo, so I just sent them a photo that we'd done on the phone and it, it was pretty terrible, really. Um, but this time I made uh, a friend who, used to be a photography lecturer, um, kind enough to do one. So it, it, it was a better photo this time, thank goodness. <laughs> yeah, even though you don't think it is, I think it's an awesome photo and so does everyone else. So you need to accept it, it's a great photo. Oh, thanks. She's a good photographer. She's, she's um, a good mate and she was kind enough to do it. Uh, you know, come down the house and do it for me. So I, I was grateful. She did. Yeah. She did give me a hard time for about an hour and a half, but <laughs> well, it worked. And you kept saying it was your face that let it down, and that is rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, yeah, okay. It's hard enough trying to stroke your egos to that you're good writers without trying to say that you're also not horrendous looking. I mean, you know, we've only got so much time on our hands, we can't do everything. <laughs> I caught you on that, can you? Because he is not horrendous looking. 
I already told you and you told me that uh, you were um, your wife disagreed or something. I can't remember. I can't remember what I said, but <laughs> I'm kidding. It's just a joke. It's just, it's just... <laughs> no, it was just a joke. <laughs> no, yeah, I, I can't add on telling you that you're handsome every day. It's just no, you no, know, no. I've I've got a list of people that I have to tell they're amazing. Okay. You know, it's 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 hard work, you lot. Honestly, <laughs> I'm not that hard work. Honestly, I was, it's, I'm just just kidding. <laughs> I think most most authors are a little bit fragile about their their books, aren't they? Because you a little bit, <laughs> you you all insecure little, little bags, bags of anxiousness. <laughs> it's <laughs> I think we tend to be quite introverted people, really. But no, I'm not. I'm not insecure about them anymore. I'm uh, I'm quite happy. If people, I said before, the night if people love them, that's fantastic, and if they hate them, that's okay as well. That's good. I'm pleased. I'll take you off my list of uh, ego boosting then. <laughs> I'm okay. Yeah. Good. Actually, most of you Welsh authors are all right. It's obviously the English. Perhaps there's weakness in the English. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I find um, being Welsh, um, I, I heard myself on the, I did, did a thing on um, BBC Radio Wales a while ago, and I hadn't heard my voice for years, not since I used to do video interviews with um, people giving evidence and stuff. And I, and I was completely amazed how Welsh I sounded. <laughs> when we did it like this on um, Facebook, it, I didn't sound nearly as Welsh, but for some reason on the radio, I, it was, I said, an incredibly strong Welsh accent. That, su that, that surprised me. Um, because you hear your voice in your head differently, don't you? Yeah, I done um, a podcast recently, and I listened to it back, and I thought I sounded really common. But apparently, everyone thinks they sound common. But I really thought I sounded common. Oh, no, you don't. <laughs> no, I wouldn't be able to pin your accent down, actually. Yeah. What um, See, I don't think I have an accent, but apparently I do. Um, so I'm from, well, Luton originally, so. Yeah, you're a little bit London. Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I dropped my T's um, mostly, I think, is my biggest giveaway of where I'm from. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, especially. Being Welsh, we tend to write sentences backwards sometimes, because in the Welsh language, Things are the other way around. Um, I try to think. Of, oh yeah, a swimming pool would be pool in VR. So it, it's pool swimming, and not swimming pool. And, and in the Welsh language, lots of things like that. Um, so we do tend sometimes to write a little bit back, back to the front. Um, and I know there's, there's an author called Leslie Thomas who wrote, you know, the Wounded Soldiers and those books. And if you read his stuff. It, that is so Welsh because all his sentences, or, or an awful lot of his sentences, you think are, are the wrong way around. <laughs> it works. So. Mm -hmm. That's something I, I've had to sort of teach myself is is not to do that so much. Yeah, I've never noticed that. I must admit, I didn't realise actually, but that's quite interesting. Yeah, I mean, it, it's very common with with the Welsh language. Is is um. And, and the alphabet's different as well. Um, there's letters in, like, double L is a letter. Um, like, Lettley, you know, it's double L, double L. But that's actually a letter in the alphabet, two L's. And two D's is a letter on its own, which is um, uh, like a th sound. And CH is a letter, which is chwarae, which is, means play. It starts with a CH, but that's one, well, that's one letter. Mm -hmm. the alphabet, so it's, it's completely different alphabet um, and there's, there's there's no co in welsh and as either things like that yeah yeah i'm just gonna stick to english english is hard enough <laughs> i think welsh is quite a very hard language to learn yeah it sounds like it it is it is um, yeah and, and it can change 
it changed. The tense can change if you're talking about the past or the future. Um, the words change. Um, it's, I, I won't explain it because it's quite complicated, and but, but it is an incredibly complex thing to learn, really, because of all, all those things, those changes, different tenses we've got to learn them. Um, <laughs> and if you were speaking to someone, um, like if I was speaking to you, I might say, I call you um, Siddiqui, which is how are you, with the he. If, if I knew you better, uh, like we've been close friends for years, I wouldn't say he, I'd say T, which is the same word, means exactly the same, but it's a different word because just because of how well I know you. So it's, it's, it is crazy complicated, really. Yeah, it's yeah. <laughs> Just I mind. Just, I to get one of the books translated into Welsh because I've always liked the idea of having one one of them in Welsh, but I just can't get get it done. It's so if if in the unlikely event anyone watches this who publishes Welsh books, I'd love to have a book published in Welsh. Yeah, we'll put a shout out. <laughs> Seriously, it's it's um. Yeah, there's like Welsh Books Council, and they give actually give grants to translators to do it, but they will only do it for children's books, not for adults' books. So, um, yeah. A strange bit. Mm. Yeah. Um, a silly question that I definitely didn't ask you last time. Who's you? Who was your first celebrity crush? Bloody hell, I said. <laughs> I told you I'd had lots of practice. <laughs> uh, oh, Debbie Harry. That's how old I am. Because she, <laughs> she's about 70 now. She, <laughs> Is she well, really? Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm, I'm 61 then. But that was when I was about 18. Popular choice. She's great. Yeah. yeah. I, I think she's awesome. Obviously not in that way, but she is awesome. <laughs> Blondie were a great fan, it's a lot of great fun, don't they? So yeah. Yeah. Um, awesome. Yeah, probably her. <laughs> I'll ask you then, who was your first celebrity crush? Yeah, I don't remember. I think it was probably Jason Donovan. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. But I saw him actually, um, I went to a festival local to me that was only like a little um, thing and he was there. And I, I was on my own, so I was at the front. And as were all women <laughs> along the barrier <laughs> and he sang his songs from the 80s like the late 80s and I knew all the words still and I was really surprised <laughs> but and the girls were screaming for him and he was wearing like like uh, white jeans and a white um shirt and yeah it was just we were all transported back to our charges <laughs> when, when I was young it was um the sort of the male uh, heart drums in the pop world of people like David Cassidy and uh, David Essex, those sort of people. But I, I was always into stuff like, um, even as a, a, a 16, a 13 year old actually, stuff like Santana and the Stones and uh, Pink Floyd and that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um... Um, I asked that question and David Cassidy comes up all the time. Um, my mum will be 60 this year and I think hers was Donny Osmond and I think her sister was David Cassidy, but she liked David Essex as well and then she went on to Sting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, those were the three when they at that time was, was yeah, I'd forgotten about Donny Osmond. Yeah, and uh, there was a band called the Osmonds, wasn't there? Marie, Jimmy mm -hmm. Osmond, yeah, I remember. I remember now. I wasn't ever into <laughs> that sort of stuff, but um. yeah, my my musical education goes back. <laughs> I know all about them. My mum has taught me well. That's good. That's, I think that's good. Yeah, I, I'm always playing stuff around the house. Um, I usually got music playing when I write then. I quite quite like uh, Ploma Faith at the moment. I like her stuff a lot. Um, John Amatrader, play a load of her stuff. 
Oh, Lana Del Rey. I've just, just been listening to her recently as well. Oh, yeah. Her stuff's lovely. Yeah. Like her stuff. Yeah. Some of it's quite dark, actually, the lyrics, but that's good stuff. Whereas when I'm at work, I blast out the jam. <laughs> I like the jam. Yeah. Paul Weller. Um, saw him live in Cardiff Castle. Um, really. What was my favourite one? Um, you Do Something To Me, I think it's called, like a ballad. Mm, yeah. That was a lovely song. Um, he didn't play any of the jazz stuff. Oh, really? Not one. Oh, I, so I saw him in London somewhere, um, and he'd done a few jam songs, actually. Um, yeah, I've yeah. got you know, the name of jam songs in there. <laughs> Eating rifles, all this stuff. Um, <laughs> no, he, he didn't play one. Yeah, but he's a bit funny, isn't he, about that? Um, can be, apparently. Yeah, uh, I don't know why, um, you know, because that's what people knew him for originally, although he's done most since then. But because yeah, I've seen yeah. him from the jam, um, which is Bruce Foxton, um, and then a guy called Russell Hastings um, does Paul Wellers, and that's awesome. Um, my mum, that's when my mum goes back to her youth <laughs> and I lose her, she's gone. <laughs> um, I mean, you go to some concerts and they don't play, they only play their new stuff, don't they? Like we saw Mick Hucknell once, he didn't play any of the Simply Red stuff. Um, we saw Paul Simon and he only, the only Simon and Garfunkel one he did was Sound of Silence. Um, which, as great as the other ones were, that's what you want to hear, isn't it, really? That's yes. What <laughs> and and the cheer, when he did do that one, the amount of cheering, you know, was so much more than for any of the other stuff he did. But. Yeah. Yeah, we went to see you too, and they just had a new album out, um, and they played their new stuff, but then they luckily they played some of the old stuff in between, and people went nuts because, you know, some of their old songs are amazing. And then for their new stuff, Vanessa's really hardcore fans didn't really. No, not so. <laughs> no, I, I know. <laughs> yeah. And I was dragged along. I say dragged along. I went to see the police because my mum, when they reformed. Oh. <clears throat> and I swear, me and my sister were the youngest people in the crowd. It was at Twickenham. I'm and amazed, um, I mean, I'm amazed they weren't something because, yeah, I, I went to see the Stones in Hyde Park and there were loads of young people. There were loads of people my age, obviously, and older, but there were lots of young people as well. Yeah, I'm, I, I mean, I don't know if it's, I mean, Twickenham was massive anyway, yeah. but I didn't see any other young people. <laughs> and, you know, it wasn't that long ago. I think we we're in our 20s, but um, yeah. Police were, ma were massive, weren't they? So I'm surprised at that. Yeah, I mean it was it was good, you know. Although, yeah, obviously they've got their massive hits. Um, our, our mums are fans, so you know we know quite a few of them. But you know, hearing every breath you take song live was pretty special, and um, that was. But yeah, okay. but our mum was singing along to everything. She knew all the words to all the songs, and me and my sister were just looking at each other like, <laughs> who is this? <laughs> Yeah, it was fun. <laughs> I, I love it. I've seen quite a lot of sort of my favourite artists now over the years, um, which is great. Yeah, I've got a couple on my wish list. Um, but I saw Ed Sheeran um, two summers ago. Uh, um, I, I went, I live in Bedfordshire and he was in Ipswich closing his tour. And I, I think I woke up randomly in the early hours of one morning and saw that he was going on tour. So I just bought a ticket. I was like, because I've wanted to see him for ages. And yeah, I went to see him. Drove all the way to Ipswich on my own. And I didn't care. It was amazing. Yeah, I did. He's very talented. Yeah, he is. And he, yeah, he was awesome. Um, yeah, it was absolutely incredible. One, Yeah, definitely one of the best concerts I've been to. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> I mean, we, we've seen so many live now, um, although obviously not for a while, but hopefully again soon. I did get some tickets for Heather Small, you know, 
we used to be an M people. What have we done today? To make you feel that one. Um, in Ca she's in Cardiff uh, in a couple of months, so got tickets for that one. Awesome. Yeah, I don't think I've got any actually at the minute. Comedians, I've got tickets for, but not music. Yeah. We go to a lot of as well. It's um, the last one we saw was um, Milton Jones. He's a nutcase. He's yeah. an absolute. That was in Cardiff as well. <laughs> uh, and the one before that, which I thought was one of the best things I've ever been to, was John Cooper Clark. Oh, really? Oh, okay. You know, the po poet guy? Poet, yeah. I thought he was great. <laughs> a little hard to understand sometimes because he speaks so fast. Yeah. And he's got the um, but yeah, loved, loved that. Great. Yeah, um, we're lucky actually, because um, I live in a small town, but we've got a theatre, so we've had, um, we get comedians quite frequently. Okay. Um, I can't remember who I saw last, maybe Rob Beckett was one of the last. I've seen John Richardson, Sarah Millican, Jason Mankford. Oh. It would, yeah, we're really lucky actually to have that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Dara O'Brien I've seen as well. We've got a little theatre in... Carmarthen, and um, which is our nearest town. Um, it's only a little town. But there's an old theatre there. It used, to, it, it used to be a cinema, and they converted it into a little theatre. The council have done it, believe it or not. Um, and we saw Ruby Wax there just before lockdown. Um, and um, Al Murray came. Um, Joe Lysett. So I love Joe For a little town, it's amazing how, who. Who comes? Uh, Robert Plant played there. Uh, yeah, um, and uh, I'm trying to think. Rod Gilbert is from Kamar then. Oh, that's who we had tickets to see, and not long after lockdowns, so he was one of the first that got cancelled, and we were gutted. Uh, but he, he refuses to play Kamar then because oh. he knows because everyone knows him. So it's it's um. Yeah, I, think, I can. I think he'd get a great gig. I think they'd love him, you know, because he's he's a really popular bloke, isn't he? He so, is, yeah. So perhaps he should do it just, but no, he, he won't play Kamalan because he's from Kamalan. Oh. Have you seen Taskmaster with him? No. Because uh, um, uh, he's really good friends with Greg Davis and Greg Davis is the host and yeah. he winds him up something chronic. For the whole series, and it's just hilarious. I love it. <laughs> we saw Jim Crow's live with Motor Point in Cardiff, and that was one of the funniest things. He was fantastic. Yeah, he's on my wish list. We had tickets to see him, and we couldn't go, and I was gutted as well. Oh, he's so self-deprecated, and a lot of the humour was aimed at himself, and it, he was brilliant. What a yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, I would, yeah. Yeah, I'd go and see him again anytime. And we saw Billy Connolly as well, just I think one of the last concerts he did um, because of the whole Parkinson thing, you know. And he did two hours and he was fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, I can imagine. He's, he's just funny, isn't he? I don't, he, he wouldn't even try and he'd be funny. Yeah, and he's, he's so intelligent as well, isn't he? He just comes over as being really bright and. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We seem to have strayed off topic. <laughs> yeah, we have my yeah, we've, we've miles off, haven't we? Yeah, I don't even know how that happened. Oh, but it started from Blondie. <laughs> That's right, yeah. I thought about <laughs> that, really. <laughs> well, we spoke about books, so Yeah, we've we've talked a lot, haven't we? Yeah, we have actually. We've been speaking for ages, haven't we? <laughs> yeah. So I suppose um we should remind everyone why we're here. Okay. And it's time <laughs> um, to so, watch it back, believe it or not. Yeah, I know. What well, we've been chatting for like two hours, I think. That's mad. Longer, actually. Was it half three? That's mad. I know. Where's the time? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, probably about half an hour of that is about books, isn't it, really? But, but that doesn't yeah. matter. It doesn't matter. It's we squished it in. It's fine. <laughs> right. Any last questions then before I go and have my tea? Uh, no, just uh, remind everyone um, 
where they can get your books from and where they can find out more about you. Okay. Um, if there's uh, anything left to find out. <laughs> okay, well, I'll, I'll, yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> for my shoe size. Um, <laughs> probably Kurt's books, the easiest place to find it. Oh, my Amazon author page. That, that says about me on my Facebook page. Um, my books were exclusive to Amazon until about two weeks ago, but now they're for sale in loads of places. All, all the usual suspects like um, Kobo and Apple Books and Google, Barnes and Noble, all those places. But I'm told because my publisher has been taken over by a much bigger publisher, an American publisher, that they're now for sale in loads of about 60 places. Um, and, and I did notice that the sisters is in stock um, on the on the Waterstones website last night, which um, which was a pleasant surprise. Um, but I didn't know they had it in stock. Um, so yeah, apparently you know you can now get the box in loads of places. So that's it's all good news for me anyway. Yes, so everyone should go buy them because they're all amazing. There we go. That's that's appreciated. Um, I, I appreciate your support and 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 your help and. Uh, and all the other bloggers as well who do a fantastic job. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> it's, it's been great talking to you and I think it's time for something to eat. <laughs>